So today I'm going to do my first ever book haul. Uh, it is a movie themed book haul. Um, there is a site called bookoutlet.ca um, and I believe there's a .com version as well. So they do free shipping over orders of $50. This is not a sponsored post. I just really love books and it's always nice to find them at a cheaper price than usual. Um, so I bought a ton of books and I'm going to show them to you. Um, the box is so heavy I can't even lift it. I got 10 or 12 books I believe. Um, I'll go through them all and let me know what you think. If you've read these books, if you have suggestions for books about filmmaking or actors or actresses. Um, I love film history as well so I'm very interested in that type of stuff like old Hollywood and everything. So I got, this was my first time ordering from them. It was a great experience. Um, I believe they do free shipping to the states as well with the, uh, as soon as you hit the threshold for $50 either American or Canadian I believe which again isn't hard to do with books um, and I spent a hundred and fourteen dollars and seventy nine cents uh, Canadian and uh, shipping was the biggest thing for me that I was worried about because obviously books are very heavy so it was nice to know that, that was covered and I got 11 books altogether so I feel like that's a good deal um, and I think the site operates by taking all the leftover inventory from bookstores or schools or something like that maybe. Uh, comment below if you're familiar with the site. Again, I heard about it through a friend and I was very curious to check it out and I've actually placed another order with them for horror themed books because horror is honestly a genre I've avoided in books, movies, TV, everything. So now that I'm slowly getting more into it, I'm very curious to read some horror themed books. Um, so I will definitely do a video once those arrive. So stay tuned for that. The only thing that I've noticed with this site is um, the cover art on a few that I had saw online and that I actually got the physical copies of were different. It wasn't a huge deal breaker for me. I don't mean like printing error. I just mean like the design was different from what I saw online. But again, if that's something that's really particular to you, um, maybe message them and request that cover. So the first one that I got is on directing film David Mamet. Mamet I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, and I paid a total of $9.79. All the prices I'm listing will be in Canadian. So so just keep that in mind if you're in a different country and the currencies are different. Um, I don't know much about him. I was mostly intrigued by what his style would be like. Uh, I'm very interested in directing and what their what techniques they use and how their style is and what kind of methods they use to produce results and which ones they won't recommend. So I'm very curious to read. Uh, it's a pretty short book as well. It's only 105 pages, 106 pages. So um, pretty quick and it goes through some of his student interactions. Like there's conversations with him when the student. So maybe he taught filmmaking. Again, I just went this blind. Um, it was pretty low price. So I was more interested in the content. If it turns out to be a bummer, I'm not going to be heartbroken about it, but if you read this book, if you're familiar with him, uh, I don't know if he's read any other books. It's a Penguin book and they're usually pretty good. And just reading on the back, it says he's a controversial Pulitzer Prize winning playwright. Okay, so maybe it's more for how he compares directing stage to correcting film. I don't know what makes him controversial. Uh, honestly, I went into this blind. I've never heard his name before. So comment below, is this something I should skip entirely? Is it going to be uh, disturbing? but uh, we'll see what this one turns out. The next book that I got is called Wrong Kind of Women, Inside Our Revolution to Dismantle the Gods of Hollywood. Uh, it's a hardcover book, which was nice. And I've noticed on this site, uh, sometimes the hardcover versions are a dollar cheaper than the paperbacks. I guess it just depends what stock they have or anything like that. Um, but this was $14.29. Again, I'm not familiar with the author. I don't know her name. I just like the subject matter, um, filmmaking, Hollywood very male dominated industries um, and from my experience working on sets any females that are on set are typically in very gender specific roles. Um, I think I've seen a female camera operator twice and again that doesn't mean there's not talented women out there it's just the opportunities are less for women I find so I'm very curious to see what this is about um, and her perspective and if she's worked in the film industry if she's interviewing other females in the industry um, so and oh I just saw Catherine Bigelow's name in here I really like her she's a female director um, yeah so I'm very curious to read this it'll probably <laughs> make me um, feel some things because 
obviously I believe women should be treated equally as men uh, and currently that is not the case in Hollywood from my perspective. Um, even with the pay scale you can google probably too many articles that discuss the differences between men and women's pay on film sets on camera and off camera um, so yeah I'm very curious to see um, what this one is all about. So my next book is the biography of Mel Brooks Funny Man uh, again it's a hardcover book this book was actually free because the website was having a buy to get the third one promo so this was free if I would have paid for it it would have been uh, six dollars and nine cents so again it's a big book um, I don't know much about his life I've seen Spaceballs. I haven't seen Blazing Saddles or Young Frankenstein or anything like that. They are definitely on the watch list so I want to check them out but I'm very curious to learn more about him. I love Spaceballs. I think it's so funny um, and I don't know much about the man behind the movie so I think this will be a good one and I love biographies, autobiographies, stuff like that. I think the people who make the movies are sometimes just as fascinating if not more fascinating than the movies they create and I think it helps to watch the movie if you know about the person um, but their life and what they kind of bring to the table with their life experiences and stuff that's happened so uh, again it's a pretty long book over 600 pages um, it's got photos and uh, yeah I'm curious to check it out but comment below if you've read this if you've seen his movies please no spoilers but I don't know if he has other books or anything like that but six dollars I was are free when I got it with the promo I was definitely willing to take a chance. The next one I got is called Deep Focus Film and Theology in Dialogue. This was one of the more expensive ones I got it was $17.99 um, again but with the buy to get one free promo that they had going on I felt like with the expense of this helped cover the expense of whatever that free one would have been if that makes sense. I'm very curious to read this and find out more. Uh, I'm familiar with film terms but there's obviously always more you can learn and this one seems to be focused more on dialogue. They have seen from different films in this and then I think they discuss the dialogue from specific scenes. They had one from Moulin Rouge um, and they go through critics approach, film theory and theology, uh, critics posture. Um, yeah and I'm very curious to find out more some of these movies I haven't seen. Um, I don't know, I haven't heard the author's name before, I don't know much about them um, but again it's a paperback 300 or 250 pages it says it's from Baker Academic so maybe university professor or something like that I'm guessing seen from Titanic March of the Penguins um, yeah I think it's gonna be dialogue is obviously such a, an important part of the film and how you tell the story visually and through words um, so I think this will be an interesting look at that very specific part of a film um, I know this might sound boring to some people but I love this kind of stuff I love learning more about it and I think it makes reaction videos better and reviews better because I have that knowledge and I can view things differently and I can bring a new perspective to it so I'm really excited to uh, learn more about this. The next book that I got is called Showgirls, Teen Wolves, and Astro Zombies, a film critic's year-long quest to find the worst movie ever made. Uh, if you're familiar with my channel and my content, you know that I love terrible movies. So as soon as I saw this, I was like, yes, this is something that would definitely interest me. Um, I might put off reading it for a little while just because I'm worried there's going to be spoilers about movies I haven't seen. Um, but if you've read this, please comment below and let me know what you think. Uh, I haven't seen Showgirls, Astro Zombies, I'm not sure what he's referring to. Uh, um, and Teen Wolves. I haven't seen Teen Wolf um, so I'm very curious to see and from his perspective oh okay it says Michael Adams is a reviewer and editor for the Australian edition of Empire magazine. Uh, Empire from what I know is a UK film magazine and when I lived in the UK I got it every month I was obsessed with it um, so I'm very excited that he's um, related to them um, and he writes for Rotten Tomatoes, thewarp.com. It's a paperback book uh, 332 pages and I paid nine dollars and 79 cents for it um, and it looks like it breaks it down into the different genres much like he has on the title um, different segments of the films that he watched. The most obscure director ever, okay? I'm very excited to read this and I think it's awesome that there's a critic who seems to specialize in bad movies or make goes out of his way to watch bad movies. I hope the reviews aren't just him tearing them apart and I hope he can love bad movies even if they're not the most well produced. I hope he still can find something redeemable about them. Um, so yeah, I'm curious to see how this one turns out. 
The next one is Carrie Fisher, Life on the Edge. Uh, it's paperback and I paid $9.49 for it. Um, it's a pretty big book. It's 400 and some pages. I've read her book, The Princess Diarist, and I really loved it. I love Star Wars. Um, I just felt like she was writing and was being opest and open and honest and wasn't censoring herself and definitely was showing some of the bad parts that she had experienced as well. So I'm really excited. I have a couple other books of hers, so I'm very curious to read this one and learn more about her. Again, I just think she is a fascinating person and had obviously a very extraordinary life. She's one of the people who I wish was still alive that I could meet in person because I don't know, it's weird when you feel like connected to somebody you haven't met, but that's how I feel about her. Um, so yeah, I'm very, this seems more autobiographical. So um, I, whereas Princess Diarist was more about her time on Star Wars and definitely still about her life, but that was the main focus uh, of that one. If you haven't read that book, um, I would definitely check it out. It's very uh, well done. Like I said, I enjoy learning about actors and actresses and directors and kind of their story and how they got into the business. I know Carrie Fisher's mom was a famous actress as well so I think maybe she was a little bit familiar with that growing up um, and how that played into her life but uh, yeah I think I'm gonna really enjoy this one. I'm really looking forward to reading this one like I said I really enjoyed her previous book but comment below have you read this one have you read any of her other books I think she has like five or six books out she has quite a few um, um, I haven't read as many as I would like, but I'm very excited to add this one to the collection and read it one day. The next one is Dolls, 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 which is um, from Valley of the Dolls, the movie and the book. Um, I have the book, I've read it, I've seen the movie. Um, there is a character named Jennifer in that, um, and I should do a whole video about characters named Jennifer. This I'm very curious to read. I don't know much about the production of the movie, and I'm hoping that's what this is focused about, whereas Valley of the Dolls is obviously the story of the characters um, and their life so if this is more like a behind the scenes look at the film um, unbelievable true story inside Jacqueline Susan's pop culture Valley of the Dolls it's a paperback book uh, 336 pages there's photos in here as well um, it looks like it'll be a little bit about the behind the scenes of the film and some about the author Jacqueline Susan so I'm very curious Again, to read this, to see what it's about, learn more about the movie and learn more about the book as well, um, and maybe about the process of that. Um, they're just talking about the salary of somebody shooting. They say they got $7,500, um, which would be $60,000 today um, for one of the guest stars. Sing pay as salary of the single day shoot was six thousand dollars which is crazy uh, i'm sure it happens but it's just crazy to think that much money is spent on one day um but yeah, if you're unfamiliar with Valley of the Dolls, it was very popular in the 60s. Uh, 1967 is when the movie came out, the book 1966. This was one of the buy two, get one free section, so I got it for free. If I would have paid for it, it would have been $8.05. The next one that I got is the film encyclopedia, which I have the sixth version uh right here so i just got the seventh version the most updated version and this was uh 22 dollars 39 so again one of the more expensive ones that i got but obviously you can see it is a giant giant book uh it retails for 45.99 canadian so half the price for it is almost uh, 1600 pages so 1600 pages uh, but what i like about this is that it lists directors producers screenwriters cinematographers um, styles genres um, everything that you could basically need it's a, literally a film encyclopedia as it lists uh, it says more than 7500 a to z entries on the artistic technical commercial and uh, aspects of filmmaking so so basically anything you would need to know would be in here. Um, if you want to look up a person, it says what films they've been in, what years those films are released. Um, basically, it feels like a printed version of IMDb, um, which may not be the most necessary thing, but it's nice to have, I find, and especially when I'm... Like with IMDb, I would have to know the person that I'm looking for. With this, I can flip to a random page and see an actor and be like, okay, I've never heard of Freddie Bartholomew. 
sure like let's find out more about him um, and like I said I like learning about actors and film history and old Hollywood and stuff like that so this is not something I would sit down and read cover to cover obviously it's more of like a dictionary style encyclopedia book um, but still very informative and then I would probably still go on IMDb or an online source to find out more but very cool um yeah just there's lots of actors and actresses out there obviously and unless you were the most popular ones from long ago people probably might not know your name so i think this is a good way to just find those hidden gems and just people who may have had a huge influence on film but that we just haven't heard of yet so that's kind of how i view this um, especially screenwriters and cinematographers obviously don't get as much clout as the on-screen actors so this is a good way to um, learn more about anything and everything basically so I'm looking forward to having the updated version I'll have to uh, replace the old one but yeah a giant giant book and just very informative um, if you are more I'm definitely like a pen and paper type of person as well so they include the person's name, uh, a little biography about them, the films they've been in, like they have Robert England on here, who I just stumbled upon, um, who obviously plays Freddy Krueger in the Nightmare on Elm Street series, uh, but it lists tons of other films that he was in starting in 1974 that I haven't heard of. Um, so yeah, it's definitely interesting, and I think having that quick bio helps if you want to learn more about them, or if you want to um, look up the films that they're in as well, that's nice. So maybe I'll use this giant book for a video series or a biography series or something like that where people can randomly pick a page number and I will find somebody on that page and do a little biography video about them but um, if that type of stuff interests you comment below and let me know but obviously tons in here i will also get there is the 1001 movies to watch before you die there is a new version coming out october 7th i believe i shouldn't know that but i do um and i'm definitely going to pick that up and curious to see if you're interested in a series about that comment below and let me know but that is again another book that i think is a must for any film lover um, and just people who enjoy watching movies because it includes just a wide range of films and films the average movie watcher might not uh, check out so that will be coming up soon as well as soon as it's released two books left okay the second last book is called sleeping with strangers david thompson uh how movies shape desire this one I am very excited about. I paid $12.79 for it. It's a hardcover book. Um, it's got X Machina Machina on the back. I'm probably pronouncing that incorrectly, but uh, that's a great film. If you haven't seen that one, definitely check it out. Very cerebral, literally and uh, <laughs> physically, um, but it's written. I'm not, again, I'm not familiar with the author's name. It says he's a celebrated film critic and author of the Biographical Dictionary of Film. Maybe I'll have to add that book to my list one day. Day. Um, but this retails for $38.95. I paid again $12.79 for it, uh, Canadian. So I'm very excited to see this because again it feels like it's taking on a different perspective from film. One of my favorite things about filmmaking is there's so many elements and there's so many aspects. Like there's books just about props or there's books just about hair and makeup or there's, you know, there's so many different pieces of this giant puzzle that all have to work in order to have this great film. And it's like, it's like something that shouldn't happen because so many things could go wrong, but it always seems to work out in the end. So I'm very curious to read this and comment below if you've read his book, uh, if you've read his other book, uh, I'll have to check that out as well. But yeah, just how films shape desire, like a subtitle like that. I mean, it's just instantly piqued my interest. I'm very curious what perspective he takes, what films he includes, what, um, yeah, just all those different takeaways from a film um, and obviously there's a long history of films that have been around for a long time so I'm just seeing some chapter headlines um, codes and code breakers is this allowed what this is all about and what perspective he takes and how films influence us I feel like that's what he's getting at um, with this title and 
how we respond once we see a movie and what we're influenced to do because of a movie basically um, like that's why they took you know smoking out of old movies and old cowboy movies because people were wanted to be like them so they would go out and buy cigarettes and I mean I know that's just one example but obviously product placement but I feel like this is going to go deeper into more of like the human experience and what watching a movie mentally triggers, if that makes sense. Um, maybe I'm just reading too much into it. But the back of the book says, uh, pinwheel of delight revolving around the signals of sexuality, gender identification communicate in the movies and the figures inhabitating them. Uh, makes two dimension movies seem three dimensional and you don't have to wear those ridiculous glasses. Ha 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 ha. And my last book is called Movie Star Chronicles, a visual history of the world's greatest movie stars. Uh, this was $12.79. Uh, it says it retails Tells for $29.95. I'm assuming that's US. It doesn't have Canadian price listed, but um, it features a definite guide to 330 movie stars from pioneering performers to the silent air to the latest box office draws. Uh, it's paperback, but they have these little colored tabs. I don't know if you can see that, probably for each decade, uh, I'm guessing. And it is 575 pages, so a pretty big book as well. Um, but again, going off what I said, I really love learning about actors and especially the history of movie stars that we might not know and because movies have been around for a very long time. Just flipping to this page of uh, Jeff Bridges. So it's really cool the way they've got it broken down with little photos from each of the movie that he's been in, um, screenshots of his character. And then at the bottom, they've got a timeline of him acting starting in 1970 all the way up to 2015. Um, and if those films won an award and then it's got a little biography um, about it as well it's got how much the films grossed um, and the different kind of character types he played which I think is interesting so he's been the boy next door the charmer hero lover rebel and a character actor so just a cool way I think to break down an actor's career um, and again this would probably be used more as there's a whole page on Marlon Brando and I think this would be a cool one to flip through again this one, I don't think there'd be as many hidden gems as it's focused on the world's greatest movie stars. So these are probably gonna be actors we've all heard of and know their names. I really like the way they've broken it down uh, and I love learning about actors' biographies. So this will just add to that pile of books that I have that, um, again, I wouldn't read it cover to cover. It would just be something to flip through and to learn more about. Or if I wanted to learn more about a specific actor, I would check this. Um, but yeah, that's the last one. So again, I've got 11 of those books from Book Outlet. Um, and I spent 114 Canadian dollars, including shipping. Am I expecting every book to be a, you know, a life-changing one? No, I got these more based off of things that I wanted to learn and just references as well. Like the encyclopedia will be a reference one. That last one will be more for reference points, um, but I love everything film related. So I think these will all benefit me in some way. Um, comment below if you've read any of these, if you have any other suggestions for film books, filmmaking books, stuff like that. Again, this isn't a sponsored post. I just genuinely enjoyed finding such a wide variety of books that I was interested in at such a low cost so check out their site um, if you're interested they obviously have a wide variety of books from other subjects as well and stay tuned for when I get my shipment of horror themed books um, I hope I picked some good ones I'm curious to see what you guys think about what I got but thank you so much for watching this movie book haul uh, comment below if you want to see more of this type of content other book hauls anything like that um, I'm very curious about this type of content and if you want reviews once I've read the book. And as always, please like, comment, and subscribe to this channel and check back often for more awesome content.